I'd like to introduce Nolan, who's going to do a new segment on this show called The Breakup. Nolan makes awesome, educational, speculative, explorative Bitcoin content, but I'll let you just, des- I'll let him describe it for you. So how's it going today, Nolan? I love life, Shane. I'm glad to be here and happy to explain it. It's so the, the point is I call it the breakup. I try to use the frame of a relationship to talk about what's going on with Bitcoin. So it's not about math, let's say we're dealing with numbers. It's not about math. It's really about the choices we make and the relationship we have with money. And when I'm contrasting Bitcoin with dollars, it's a totally different type of relationship. No, don't forget, Bitcoin is a psychological commodity, right? We love the math, but that's what makes the psychology behind it strong, right? When we say there's 21 million, people say that so definitively because it forms a kind of bedrock that you can have confidence and you can make predictions out of it, right? They're not changing the numerator on you. They're not changing the unit by which it's divided, right? So that's one of the things that really helps the Bitcoin, let's call it worldview, right? Let's even take Seyfedean's two books, the Bitcoin standard and the fiat standard. These are really two worldviews that are being contrasted. And that's kind of what this show is about. So it's about relationships we have with money and it's about ending relationships. So we're not going to be talking about microeconomics and macroeconomics. The frame is not going to be Republican, Democrat, you know, Austrian school versus Keynesian. It's not like there's going to be a debate and we're going to account and then one person's right. You know what I mean? That's not really what's going on. It's about the choices that we make and why we make them. So the relationship that we're in with money, we can say it's unhealthy or we can say it's healthy. It's, it's like any other relationship. And that's really what the show's about. And when I say that, you know, we're not, we're not here to really underline the same talking points you'd get in mainstream media stories. It's not, oh, look at the hot take and they dunked on you. And it's, you know, there's none of this fake decisions, fake binaries, right? So we're we're beyond the fake binaries. And I think today's example, so I'm going to, I'm going to apply today's story to, uh, you know, schadenfreude. So I might be a relationship counselor in this show, right? But I'm, I'm not a great person either. I, uh, this is not really like, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not trying to help you be a better person. I'm trying to help you understand why people love Bitcoin. So don't do schadenfreude. It's one of my big worries about Bitcoiners that we're so right. And then we're not going to, we're just going to be happy with other people's misery because they're poor and whatever, and they didn't make choices that we made. So don't do like me, don't have schadenfreude. But I'm here living as a sovereign individual in Barbados. And Sometimes I look at the weather back in New York City, you know, where I used to live. I, I'm, a, I'm a Brooklyn refugee. I ran out of Brooklyn because of all the craziness. I ran away from the Statue of Liberty as other people used to be refugees there. I'm, I got out of there. And so schadenfreude, you know, I'm here. It's nice. I look up in the weather and it's like minus 10 degrees or something crazy in New York City. I see it in Vermont. It's minus a million, right? It's really cold. And not only is it really cold, these idiots don't have any energy anymore right? What happened to all the electricity? This used to be one of the most advanced parts of the world, but it turns out that everyone's bright ideas has led to an energy matrix that's a disaster. They're burning oil today in the Northeast of the United States. They're burning oil for electricity. They're desperately shipping tankers of natural gas by ship from the Caribbean, where I am today, up there to keep those houses warm. So now they're using more greenhouse gases than ever, than ever before just to supply the needs of that area. Now you had people building windmills everywhere, but the wind's not blowing today, it's too cold, there's no wind, so what are you gonna do? So none of that happened. So now you've got a bunch of folks who I think their will is to fight climate change. And and I, let's look at all the science here. We've got a bunch of scientists saying it's happening. I, I think they got the numbers right, I think they're correct. We can see that anthropogenic Global warming is a real thing, and I'm not, I'm not qualified to say it's not. I see a bunch of people saying it's a real thing. But how we deal with it, that's a practical decision for people who are interested in economics and, and interested in Bitcoin and financial relationships. So let's look at the relationships which exist. So here's my sort of psychological engine framework that I came up with. And I know you can't read it. It's still a bit of a work in progress. This orange I chose, obviously to express this relationship, it's the same quadrants, right? You've got the, the I here, you know, the US dollar, and you've got admin, government, and commercial interests, and you've got a person here. So the bedrock of this system is people, right? We're the, the, they're the foundation. Now, if you contrast that and you look at Bitcoin, you've got Bitcoin as a foundation, and you've got people who can make decisions. Now, 
the reason I have these two different here, I should explain, because peers are anyone who decides to run a node, anyone who decides to keep a ledger, anyone who decides to participate in the Bitcoin network, all of those people have a particular relationship with the money that they're mining, with the money that they're following, with the money that they're tracking, with the money that they use. And those people then can make certain decisions. Take a miner, for example. They can make decisions with what they do with the yield they get from mining Bitcoins. Now, in this relationship here, we start to see, let, let's contrast it to what we've got. Let's look at the outcomes, the output of the political system and the financial system in the Northeast of the United States. I would say that there's a consensus among the people there to have nuclear power. We saw that even amongst Democrats from 2018 until now, the appetite for nuclear went from about 37% to about 60%. I'd say the California blackouts and brownouts had a lot to do with the changing perception. There was also information campaigns. It's being discussed a lot more. And it really might be the solution to all global warming troubles. So what we do have is, a, a, let's say, a problem with nuclear. And I'll explain why. Because it's the relationships with money that end up showing why we've got these problems with nuclear power. So the will is there. Why don't we have more nuclear? Well, here's what happened. So everyone knows we've got a, a, a very strong relationship with the US dollar and oil. I don't need to go over that. That's why they're shipping it in right now to fix the electrical problems. There's people who have money and they want electricity. They're gonna spend their money. They're gonna get electricity. So that's the commercial interest, right? Great, we all get that, no problem. The next one here, admin and government, right? <clears throat> Those are the three participants that really have the more bilateral and direct relationship with money, right? So it's them who get to decide where to put a nuclear reactor where to build a wind farm. That's why you have all these public campaigns. There is a market for ESG, environmental and sustainable, I don't know what even it stands for, the energy thing with the green stuff and the solar panels and the wind. So there's a market for that. It really is a lot of public policy that drives that market, but it exists nevertheless. So it's there, there is a market. That relationship with money ended up helping people get some of the energy they need. Turns out about 8% today in Northeast, about 8%. All those wind farms in the beautiful Northeast, 8% of energy solved when you really need it. <clears throat> but why isn't there nuclear? Why? I, I mean, why? Because the people don't actually get a say. There is something called the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I wish it was the Nuclear Protection Committee and then it would be NPC, but it's not, unfortunately. It's NRC. And the NRC was created in 1975. So 47 years old, if I can do the math quickly, 47 years old. And guess how many nuclear reactors they've approved in their 47 years of history? Guess, zero, zero. They've never done one, right? America has no, now fact check me. I didn't, I, you know, I saw this on Twitter. I fact checked a little bit with some Google and da da da, da. Always fact check my stuff on the show. Uh, I did my best to fact check it. I might be wrong. Please go fact check this. I don't want to spread fake news about this. But I understand there have been exactly zero new nuclear reactors. And recently, as Bitcoiners may have heard or not, Oclo, a nuclear small modular reactor out of California, a startup, had a partnership with Bitcoin miner Compass to mine, nucle mine Bitcoins with nuclear reactors when they got permission to build one. Oh, they just got denied. The NRC said, get out of here. Some blah, 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 blah. They're not going to do it, right? It's not going to happen. So right away, we see that although there is a will, 60% of Democrats, right? That sounds like you've got consensus. I don't think Republicans are saying no to energy and cheap energy, they'll take it, right? So I'm not going to mind read every Republican. There's a, everyone's different, but I'd say we're in the majority. I'd say if it was a question of people having relationships with money and investment, they could make nuclear happen. But why can't you? Because there is this government agency that says no way, right? Now, that's the way we, that's the way we are today. Now, I can make a prediction and say, I don't think that's going to last. My prediction is the new Northeast is going to get ahead of the game with nuclear. They're going to get rid of this uh, NRC or whatever. But my argument is don't go, uh, you know, don't go lobbying Washington, D.C. The truth is Bitcoiners will be the largest private purchaser of small modular nuclear reactors in the world. No state will buy as many as Bitcoin miners. It's not even going to be close. Rolls-Royce is selling them right now. They're saying they're looking for buyers. There's cities they think maybe, I don't know, maybe a country will buy them. No, 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 no. Bitcoin miners are going to buy them. And they don't have to put them near people. They can put them anywhere in the world. Until now, we always thought these nuclear reactors needed to be near city centers because obviously people need them. But when it's Bitcoiners, they don't really need the people to, to, to make an excuse to build one. There are places in the world where these nuclear reactors can be placed and, and used and 
they can mine Bitcoin. Incidentally, they can also be turned to terraformation. You can put them in a desert like the Western Sahara, where there is not really a sovereign government there to begin with. If Bitcoiners brought their cows and some bison and their food source, you could re-green the desert pretty easily. That's a, a tried and true way of terraformation by bringing livestock to food. You get mushrooms from it too, which is great. So Bitcoiners would be fine. They can go to the desert. They don't care. They don't need to go to Washington. So. There's an idea here that comes from that book, Sovereign Individual. I think a lot of Bitcoiners have read that book, but there's a, a, a thread I want to bring forward called megapolitics. And that's kind of what the show is about in the end. When we talk about these relationships with money, it's not necessarily about we want this bottom up situation and everyone has to make a decision and we're going to do it and then it's going to go that way. So it's not about, and, and even this show, to even bring it back to the original context of, of the breakup, it's not about trading dollars for Bitcoin. It's not that. It's not about trading dollars for Bitcoin. It's about trading a relationship with money, one for the other. It is about destroying things. It is about building new things. And when you have an entire market of Bitcoin and miners that are going to have this bilateral relationship where peers themselves are going to be able to decide the energy matrix, unlike here, the energy matrix, money and decision makers, it wasn't the people in a bilateral relationship with their money that was able to make nuclear reactors happen across the American landscape. We'll get there. I think it's just around the corner. This system will not necessarily fail American consumers in the long run. They probably will get the results, but it doesn't matter because Bitcoiners are going to be buying up so many reactors from France, from England, from Holland. They're going to put them all around the world. And what permissions America gives won't really be a concern in the end. Nevertheless, we're going to get our nuclear energy and we're not going to have to worry about Northeasterners running out of power during a cold snap. That's not going to happen again. And that's not going to happen if Bitcoiners propel nuclear energy forward, which is really what I hope to see happen. I hope to see Bitcoiners as the main reason why we're able to put small modular nuclear reactors around the world and in the end win this war against global warming and, and all the other trouble. So again, it's about relationships, the show. I'm going to try and take news stories like today, the cold in the Northeast, so basic weather story. And I'm going to try and filter it through these two uh, filters, right? Through the filter of our relationship with the US dollar, relationship with Bitcoin. And the point is really to show that there's a trend here and, and that it really isn't a choice, right? You know, some stuff, war comes to you sometimes. And not to say that it's war necessarily, but it's a big change. And it's not always one that can be made with just normal consumption habits. It in fact ends up changing the way you consume, which we'll get into more and more often. So that's all I got for today, Shane. That's the show. Hey, it was a timely one. Uh, I actually didn't have power this morning and almost had to cancel the show. And I live in the Northeast, Northeast so I really Earth. appreciate this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's freezing outside. I don't know what I was supposed to do. Just burn my stovetop? Like, <laughs> gas. Well, the good news is, and, and it's a shame because let's, let's also remember that the only temperate forest, the great temperate forest left on Earth is right on your doorstep. It's that forest that goes from Vermont to New Hampshire all the way up through Maine and New Brunswick and Quebec. There's a lot of northern forest, boreal forest, Canadian shield stuff. There's a lot of rainforest left in, in, in large clumps, but there is only one on Earth, only one on Earth. That's like that one that goes over Vermont and those beautiful maple trees and all that stuff. That's a great forest. There are little pockets, but a great one. And so what are we supposed to do? Burn it <laughs> for some electricity? You know what I mean? It's an amazing thing we have, and, and it's absurd. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I I love the ideas. Thanks for coming on, man. We'll uh, I think we'll talk to you again tomorrow for sure. Awesome, Shane. Ciao, man. Uh -huh.